What's up everyone? Today I'm going to give you some tips on installing overhead lighting. I recently installed about 650 feet of overhead lighting and went with just some twinkle lights and just wanted to point some things out that would make this a lot easier and make it long lasting for you. So if you are interested in hanging some overhead lighting, here are a few tips that I would recommend after quite a bit of trial and error. I have cable that is ran parallel to my lighting that is rated for 340 pounds. Now you do not need a 340 pound cable if you're running just twinkle lights. I actually put heavier duty cable in in case any branches from our trees fall so that it does not just completely wipe out our lighting system. My original plan was to hang some heavier duty lights up. That is why the cable is rated for 340 pounds. I would recommend making sure that all of the fasteners you use, like the ones that attach to your tree or your post are also rated for the 340 pounds that your cable is capable of holding. Another thing I would recommend is I originally ran 650 feet of eighth inch cable, but I did it in one continuous run. And the cable alone was very easy to pull tight. But once I started to put lights on it, there was way too much slack in the cable and the cable was a lot heavier than I anticipated. So just as an example, let's say this first tree where the cable is coming off is A. Then this post closest to me is B and that further tree from me is C. So I took and I made one run from A to B. And then I put ends on the end of it. And then I used carabiners to fasten it to the tree and then to my post. Next, I made one from B all the way to C. And that is one continual run. So I stop it at each point so that if need be, I can adjust the tension for that one cable because if you're running multiple routes of lights or cables, it'll be very hard to get the slack out of the cable. In total, I have essentially eight different cables ran through our yard so that I was able to install them all by myself and pull the tension out and keep them fastened without the assistance of anyone else. A cool trick if you are pulling them really tight and you just can't get the slack out, I'll show you a fastener that'll help you do that and make it very easy so you'd purchase something to cut the cable. Um, wire cutters could work, but it'll just take you a little bit to gnaw at them. But these little clips here, that you could get them in zinc, or in this case, you could get them in stainless steel. The price difference is pretty large. For two of these little fasteners in stainless steel, it's about $8. And they come with a loop that the cable goes on. So this is, and then you're supposed to use two of these on each each loop that you make. So I'm just gonna show you real quickly. So the cable would end up being like this inside here. And you put it like this, make it really tight there. And this could potentially take a vise or just a second pair of hands unless you feel like getting some cramps in your fingers, then this is possible here. And I use a drill. These are seven millimeter. So if you have a seven millimeter socket, you could get them on there. Although it is still hard to tighten because you could get one of them tightened with the, with a socket and a drill really quickly. Um, when I was up on the ladder doing this, I just used my drill to make it nice and quick. But once you tighten this, it'll actually cinch around this here. And what this does is it keeps the cable from actually fraying if it rubs on any of your fasteners. So I did this 
and then I put an eye bolt inside each mounting location. Um, you could even, if you wanted to, use a hook like this and put it on before you actually put your clamp on, or you can just use a carabiner like so. So it is important that when using these carabiners that you keep it, keep an eye on the rating for them. If you plan to put 340 pound uh, cable up, maybe consider actually using a 340 pound rated carabiner here. So let's say you're hanging your cable and you just cannot get the slack out of the cable. This here is a great choice. Uh, they also have these in zinc, aluminum, and then they have them in uh, stainless steel. What I would recommend is you would hook a cable to here, you would hook a cable to here, and as it's hanging up, you could just, these would stay in position, and this centerpiece turns, and you could loosen it, or you could tighten it. So it doesn't twist any of the cables when doing this, but you can get a saw, about three inches of slack out of the line, which is actually a large amount. So these are recommended if you're planning to do something a lot heavier duty than the twinkle lights. And these would just go on each mounting location. And you could even use your, your carabiners there to actually hook them to the tree and have this between the tree and your cable and then just tighten it accordingly. So in the description down below, I will have a link for these overhead lights. Each strand that I have found was 330 feet long. So that was a very decent sized length to make things a lot easier because I didn't want a bunch of breaks throughout the lines as I was hanging them. And then I will also have a link for these lights here that are, hang that are hanging on the gazebo. Both of the lights that I bought come in multiple colors. Um, they come with eight different modes for flashing or twinkling or fading in and out. Um, which I will show you at the end of the video here, but all of the lights seem to be really well. I've purchased similar lights in the past and I've had them last for over six years. So if you want your overhead lighting to last you a long time, I highly recommend using a heavier duty rated galvanized cable, which will help your lights stay much straighter, but it'll also just keep them from putting too much strain on the actual electrical wires themselves. Thank you for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe.